Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Faulkner and I'm an intern for Village Core. Today I'm going to be talking about Airbnb. So for other events like this, be sure to visit villagecore.org or be sure to check out our YouTube channel where these meetings are posted uh, in case you miss one. So let me really quick pop open the website that I was just on um, and let's get started talking about Airbnb. So Airbnb is one of those websites that's all about traveling. And with Airbnb, you can go anywhere in the world and it's way cheaper than a hotel based off of where you want to stay. So if you want to experience what it's really like to live in a city or in a country or in any place that you'd like to travel, then staying in an Airbnb residence is the right way to go. Um, Airbnb is Airbnb homes are listed by owners themselves. So rather than a hotel being a part of a major, major corporation, um, these Airbnbs are listed by the indiv individual homeowners. Um, so with Airbnbs, there are plenty of different places to travel to. And depending on where you want to travel, there are plenty of different homes um, from for where you want to stay. So as of right now, I'm not logged into uh, I'm not logged into any account, um, but Airbnb is recommending me some places um, that I may want to travel and I may want to stay. So the cool thing about Airbnb is you can plan ahead. Say you want to go on vacation this Christmas, since Christmas is coming up, um, and you say you want to go to, let's say, Lake Arrowhead um, in California, and you want to bring along uh, some family to spend the time with them and spend Christmas in Lake Arrowhead. Airbnb has that option. So as of right now, if I were to click on this Lake Arrowhead house, um, I would be able to plan out a vacation for my entire family um, all right now at the at just a few clicks um, in order to book this house. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit how a little bit of how Airbnb works um, and how I can get this house from my family and I uh, in the upcoming future. So the cool thing about Airbnb is that there um, is that oftentimes it's self check in. So what it means by self check in is basically there'll be a little lock box that the resident that the um, homeowner that the homeowner has set up and they'll give you access to a code in order for you to grab the key and enter the house and in order to get comfortable. So the homeowner, the homeowner never actually has to be there. You're not spending any time with the homeowner, but there are also options if you do want to spend time with the homeowner um, under Airbnb. So I'll get into that a little bit later um, about the cool things that you can do with Airbnb and all the other things that um, come with the Airbnb app and the Airbnb website. But for now, I'm just going to jump to the specifics on how to actually um, how to actually book a home for your family. So as of right now, I'm looking at the Lake Arrowhead getaway with treetop views. Um, so as you can see here, it's a stunning home, and we can we can take a look at all the photos of what's in that of what's going to be included inside of this Airbnb. So as we can see, it has an expansive kitchen with a massive dining table. Um, it has a bunch of different amenities that are that are there for us to use once we arrive. Um, you can take a look at the bathrooms, the bedrooms, the porch, the fireplace, anything like that. And you can also take a look at the front of how to find the place and all, all good things like that. So as I mentioned before, you could plan a trip now, depending on when, when you want to go. So let's say, let's say, let's plan this around my Christmas break. So my Christmas break starts from the 18th and goes all the way to the, let's say the 26th, because it's only allowing me to do till the 26th. And let's say I have eight different family members that want to come, since this home can hold up to eight different people. Now, dependent on how many people you actually bring, the price will vary. So as you saw before, if I get rid of all these people, and it's just say, let's just say it's just two of us spending the night here. It'll range in different price because of the fact of who's staying there, what's gonna be the issues, what's all that. Um, we'll get into that good stuff in a minute. So as of right now, I selected that eight people will be staying here. Um, so eight of my family members can be staying here. Um, 
and this home allows a cancellation, uh, free cancellation um, within 48 hours of our booking. So as we can see here, it gives us an entire breakdown um, of what the price is gonna be before taxes are added on. So as we can see here, uh, 675, eight nights, um, that's going to be about $5,400. And then we can get a final price um, before taxes are added on of what's going to be included. Also going down the Airbnb list, if you want to take a deeper dive of what's in the house, you can um, just by scrolling down on either your phone or the computer um, because, because Airbnb is both on the phone and on computers. So you can take a look at the different kind of um, bedroom amenities you can take a look at how many beds are in the bedrooms and things like that. You can also see if Wi-Fi is included. Um, you can see if there's parking, TV, bathtub, all of that good stuff of what you want to find um, when you're booking your stay. So, so as of right now, I'm just once again selecting the dates because I thought I could change it, but I couldn't. Um, but as you can see here as well, um, if you want to get a good, if you want to know that you're getting a good home um, and not one that's trashy, not one that's banged up or anything like that, you can take a look at their reviews. So the cool thing about Airbnb is that it's a, that it's actual people who have um, stayed here, visited, and had a great experience um, at this home. So with these reviews, it's always important to look at how many reviews there are and what their current standing is um, for their reviews. So as you can see here, um, a place with about 65 reviews and a 4.94 uh, rating is pretty good. That means that a ton of people enjoyed this place and a ton of people would recommend it to others. And so you can see here, they list all their comments out um, and all the, all, all the good stuff about the house um, of what people enjoyed. And you can also be provided a map. So if you're looking for things to do in the area, you can get a general layout of what's going to be um, in the surrounding area of where you are um, compared to things around town. So as you can see here, it's not necessarily close to the lake, but it is, I'd say about a, I'd say about an eight minute drive away from Lake Arrowhead. Um, so if you wanted to visit Lake Arrowhead, this would be the right place to stay. And we can also look at um, the host. So as I mentioned before, these are individual homeowners, but at the same time, they are also hosted by um, different companies. Um, so it's kind of confusing on the logistics of all this, but basically there's the companies that run the homes um, through individual homeowners, and then there's the individual homeowners themselves. So as we can see here, we can see that they are identity verified, which basically means that they're a real person um, who Airbnb will contact in case there's any problems, um, anything related to that. And then you can also look at their total reviews. So oftentimes companies or individual homeowners will often have um, different properties that they're listing out on Airbnb. Um, so due to this, there might be many, there might be different reviews varying on which place that they're offering. Um, so dependent on how many reviews they have, it basically just means um, how well, how well they are doing with their property. And we can also look at their response rate, and we can also look at what languages they speak, which is very key if you're trying to travel to a foreign country. So your host might not, if you don't look at this, your host might not speak English. If you say, if you travel to, let's say, um, Paris, um, your, your host might not speak English. Um, so it is very important to find an Airbnb with a language that you speak so that you can communicate with your host um, uh, in order to have the best experience. Also, we can look at their response rate, which basically means how quick they respond to your messages. Um, and how they action any issues or anything like that. Um, we can also look in at check-in, check-out. Um, we can look at security, that sort of stuff. Um, overall, you can just get a general idea of what's gonna, what, what's gonna be in your stay. Now with Airbnb, um, you'll never know the address until the reservation is complete. So that is the key thing about Airbnb is you'll never know the address until 
um, the reservation is complete. So if I were to hit reserve here, um, I would I could either pay in full or I could pay part part now and part later with Airbnb or I could play um, monthly with different services that um, I could use um, if I just want to go on a trip with my family. So I'd sign up, fill out all the payment information. The host would contact me, say, hey, this is this is the general information. Here's the garage code. Here's how you get into the house. Here's the address, all that good stuff. And that basically confirms your stay at an Airbnb house. Now, of course, we are looking local. We are looking in the United States, but we don't necessarily have to look in the United States. We can look all over the world about uh, where we want to go. So if I wanted to go to, let's say, let's say I wanted to go to Italy, I could book a home, I could book a home in Italy for, let's say, Christmas time again. So let's select the 18th through the 2nd. So if I want to book a home um, over, over a period of time somewhere else, let's say Italy, um, I could search for homes in Italy and depend on how many, how many people I am um, and where I'm trying to go, I could pinpoint the exact location of where I want to stay. So let's say I'm just, I'm going with, let's say my mom. So I would select there's two adults um, staring, staying in a place and I'd be able to select which house I want. So dependent on your preferences, you can either go for a cheaper place, which a cheaper place um, usually suits somebody best, um, or you could go for a more expensive and luxurious place. Um, so it's really dependent on what you were looking for um, in an Airbnb um, and what you want to um, what you want to experience in that region um, with your stay. So as of right now, um, as of right now, you can see there's plenty of different places in Italy that I that I we could spend the night. Um, so let's just say I want to spend the night in this apartment in Rome. So as you can see here, the translation is on. The reason why the translation is on is because the um, person who listed this listed it entirely in Italian. So it is very important to know what language um, they primarily speak and how you're going to communicate with these people um, once you actually book a home. Luckily, this person does speak Italian um, and English and Spanish, so there's a wide option um, there if you're trying to communicate with them. So as you see here, once again, I get the photos, I get all the information I need to know before I book the house, I get to know exactly where it is, or not exactly where it is, but the region where it is, and I get to take a look at uh, what the house has to offer. So this would be something that I could say, okay, I wanna stay here or okay, I don't wanna stay here and I wanna look for something else. Um, there are other cool features with Airbnb though. There aren't just, it isn't just about booking a home. Um, oftentimes it is just about booking a home and just about you staying somewhere with some friends, some family, other things like that but there are also different experiences that you can have in these countries um, or with your Airbnb stay. So if we switch over to the experiences section, uh, I don't know why it's not, let's just say Europe. Let's just select a random date, two guests, and let's search under experiences. So under experiences, there are plenty of different things that you are able to do with Airbnb and with different people who are hosting these experiences. So with these experiences, it basically allows you to have a kind of like a fun time exploring the region that you're in um, with different with different people who might be a part of Airbnb or just with the host who's hosting um, this, this particular um, this particular tour or um, winery boat cruise. So if I were to select this, I would be selecting that I want to be a part of a winery boat cruise, uh, winery boat cruise, um, on 
uh, enduro value. So with this, I could basically say, okay, who's gonna go? Um, what what are we gonna do? What's included? Um, who's our host? Um, and where is it gonna take place? And we can also look at the reviews once more. This is really just a way just to meet people, just to experience the culture, see what everything is out there. Um, it's just a really fun time um, just to know the location of where you are um, and just to have some good laughs, some good food and other things like that. So myself personally in the past, when I was staying in an Airbnb with my mother in Mexico, um, we had an experience with uh, one of our Airbnb hosts uh, where I got to experience what authentic, authentic Mexican cooking was like. So with my Airbnb host, um, him and I cooked up a big meal for his family and for my family, um, where we got to enjoy typical Mexican dishes. Um, and I got to learn about how um, cooking in Mexico is different from cooking in the United States. So I got to I got to cook with traditional Mexico uh, Mexican um, tools that they use for cooking, like grinding up vegetables um, in a, with a stone um, stone like bowl and a stone. Uh, masher um but basically th that's one experience that i got to experience um also these experiences range from what you're looking for so if you're looking for something something like more adventurous um you could always look for that if you're looking for something just calm uh like a wine tasting tour something like that there's something out there for everybody um it isn't just about something stream it isn't just about something something chill um but it's um it's just about what you prefer uh for these experiences also there are also different online experiences so with the online experiences what these allow you to do is take a sort of um sort of learn and take a trip um virtually um, but also it allows you to connect with a host um, so you can plan a trip um, around the world with these hosts that uh, are on Airbnb. So Airbnb really has something really has something for everybody. It's uh, you could either find your next dream stay, you could find your next experience or you could just look for anything look for anything that suits your fancy. So what I like to do on Airbnb is whenever my mom says, okay, let's go on a vacation to, let's say, Spain. I love to just look at different kind of um, homes that I could potentially stay in for a week or two. Um, and then we just go from there. Um, I remember one time when I was little, uh, we used Airbnb for a six week long experience in Spain. So when I was little, my mom took me to Spain for six weeks. Um, and we use Airbnb in order to stay um, in six different cities um, over the six different weeks. So that was a really fun way to be immersed in the culture and to learn the language and to experience uh, the people, experience uh, eat the food, all that good, all that good stuff that comes with Airbnb. And you can also pick, um, dependent on what you want, you could pick what type of house you want. So yes, you can pick what house you want. So this is really cool with the different kind of features. So with these features, there is the potential for you to, let's say, end up in a tree house. Yes, a tree house. So Airbnb will allow you to search for a different variety of homes in your area, um, dependent on your preferences. So let's say I wanna go on a skiing trip with my friends. I could select a home that is skiable. So these homes here, um, dependent on which one you choose, um, you might be able to ski into. Um, so that is a really cool feature like this one right here. This is a type of home that you'd be able to ski into um, dependent on where you are. And this, um, this is in Sequoia Mountains. Um, so it's really dependent on what you are looking for in an Airbnb house. You could either get, let's say, a luxury home. If you're looking for something massive to experience, 
you could book a luxury home um, for a bunch of people. So this this ho- this house holds 10 people. So let's say my family and I wanted to go on that vacation again uh, over Christmas. Um, we'd be able to spend time in South Carolina with each other at this massive estate um, for around $8,000. And so we could look at the reviews, we could look at the amenities, we could look at everything like that and plan out our trip accordingly. Also, something to note is that there are different amenities that come with these houses. So oftentimes houses will have very similar things, but oftentimes houses will have different things. So it's really important to pay attention to key details of what these houses have to offer. So one big thing that a lot of people like to look for in a house, um, especially when you're traveling for multiple weeks at a time, um, or just a week at a time, is whether or not you're able to wash your clothes. Yes, that is something that a lot of people look for. So it's always important to look for a thing such as a washer or a dryer, um, whether or not the place has air conditioning or heating. Um, Anything like that is really important to take note of because a house might not have that. And then you might end up with dirty clothes that you're not able to wear. Um, So it is really important to take a look at what what these places have to offer um, and look at the key details of what they have. And also with kitchen and dining, they do list out kind of the different things that are in the house, like a dishwasher, coffee maker, breakfast bar, dining table, ice machine, that good stuff. Um, Yeah, so dependent dependent on what you're looking for, just look for the key details. Um, So if you're if you're traveling with young children and you want to have a private pool, you could look and see if there's a pool, which this one does have a pool. Um, and it's a saltwater pool, and it also has a hot tub, um, which is really nice. Um, and it's nice that Airbnb kind of offers offers these types of amenities. Um, another thing to note uh, about Airbnb is that oftentimes hotels actually do list rooms on Airbnb. So depending on which hotel it is and where you're trying to stay, a hotel might list a room cheaper on Airbnb than they would normally on their website. This is just to entice you to come in. Um, It's sort of complicated how it works and I don't have enough time to explain it, but um, hotels sometimes will uh, offer their um, rooms on Airbnb. Um, But yeah, if you're really looking for something neat, something cool, Quite literally, like any any type of living space that you can think of is on Airbnb. So I just passed one that looks very interesting, um, which is island. You could get an entire island on Airbnb for as long as you want to stay on that island. You can get an island on Airbnb, which I did, which I actually didn't know um, that you could book an island. Um, I'm actually kind of shocked that you can book an island. Um, But yeah, it's just really, it's really up to what you're looking for on your trip. So if you're just looking for something in the, let's say you're traveling to Paris and you want to be in the city, totally fine. You can totally find um, a place in the city that suits your needs um, in order to be close to, let's say the Louvre, um, the Eiffel Tower, anything like that, anything you're looking for within a certain distance of building, within a certain distance of um, transportation, anything like that, um, you'd be able to look for with Airbnb. Um, but yeah, so these houses are really, really neat. Um, they're just dependent on what you're looking for. Um, and it's really nice. And like I mentioned before, hotels do like to offer their, um, do like to offer their rooms. So, oh, well, this is a condo, but it, it gets murky on how these things work, but just just look and contact the host on what you're looking for um, and how their situation works. Um, also, sometimes there has been issues with this, which Airbnb is now cracking down on, is the fact that um, sometimes like the host likes to stay there with you, which you could either opt in for or opt out of. Um, so 
if you want the experience with the host staying there with you, that's totally something you can do. Um, you can learn from them the different culture. But if that's not something that you want, um, you don't necessarily have to have that. Um, another thing is that a lot of areas don't like um, Airbnb people because new people coming in and out, different noise levels kind of disrupts the area, that sort of stuff. Um, but other than that, it's just it's just a fun way to stay in a new place and discover what you like. Um, I didn't know there there that were there were Arctic homes, but there are. So yeah, Airbnb is just a really cool website for whatever trip you're trying to plan, whatever trip um you want, wherever you want to go, whatever house you want, however long you want to stay there. It's just a really cool way to experience a different location and learn about the culture of that location that you're trying to go. So that's it for the meeting that I have today. Once again, my name is Brandon Faulkner and I'm an intern for Village Core. Be sure to check out our website, villagecore.org, um, or check out our YouTube channel where we post all these meetings. Um, and if you want to attend one live, once again, check out our uh, check out our website um, in order to attend it live. Um, so thank you very much for watching. And uh, that is all.